Halo Sobat Medcom, kita berjumpa lagi. Kita akan melakukan wawancara dengan Wakil Menteri Luar Negeri Ukraina, Anton Demokin. Kita akan berbicara mengenai situasi terakhir di Ukraina saat ini dan apa harapannya untuk Ukraina di, di untuk masa depannya, terutama setelah saat ini Ukraina masih menghadapi serangan dari Rusia. Oke, okay? mari kita kita ikuti wawancara selanjutnya ini. What is still ringing in Ukraine? What will be the end game for you or for Ukraine? Uh, well, we, we believe the end game, um, I could put it this way, would be uh, the realization of the peace formula by uh, President Volodymyr Zelensky. Uh, it's great to know that uh, more and more countries are joining the peace formula uh, because it is a, a universal peace formula for the whole world in many ways. And uh, the challenges we are facing as uh, the world community Uh, are to be resolved uh, by the peace formula, not only uh, related to war events uh, uh, of uh, Russian war against Ukraine. So the end game would be uh, victory and peace, uh, and the formula for that uh, peace would be the peace formula uh, of uh, Vladimir Zelensky. Uh, this include the, the whole entire area, uh, uh, territory of Ukraine, Crimea or Uh, we are very strong in the position that our uh, territorial uh, uh, um, uh, wholesomeness should uh, uh, remain on the grounds of the uh, 1991. That would include uh, all the territories of Ukraine at that point uh, and Crimea including. Okay. Uh, we spoke uh, before about uh, the weather in Ukraine and you said uh, that uh, this day we uh, going to a uh, winter time right? uh, so uh, can you tell us about the, the hardship that we'll be facing by Ukraine uh, today uh, especially when the Russia still attack uh, the Ukraine territory um, we understand that this winter may be even tougher than the previous one yeah. um, we were lucky to have a reasonably warm winter last winter mm -hmm. uh, it's difficult to say how Uh, intensive the attacks will be this winter so I will answer your question in regard to what we experienced last winter and because of the attacks on uh, critical and civil infrastructure uh, our people faced uh, uh, le uh, disruptions in electricity and as such in uh, many of the municipal services like heating and water uh, and uh, On a daily life, this is indeed difficult uh, because people have to continue to work and live their daily lives and uh, uh, help in this uh, combating the aggression. But at the same time, they have uh, their lives and their families. And so they have to come home and they have to take care of their children. And when there is no light and no water and it's cold, it's very difficult. Plus, uh, the missile attacks. Uh, Uh, make people uh, visit the bomb shelters uh, quite often, uh, sometimes many times during the night. And so all of that makes life of our citizens uh, difficult on a daily basis and uh, uh, sometimes uh, chaotic uh, because uh, you cannot predict what will happen at the next moment. Plus the public transport um, uh, gets uh, disrupted when uh, air attacks happen. and. Um, Uh, winter time is most difficult in this sense. Uh, we are also experiencing attacks on the uh, in the cyberspace, on the critical infrastructure and public services and banking. So um, uh, there are many services that people use on a daily basis for that. Uh, we managed to uh, keep this front line in cyberspace uh, quite well, but at the same time uh, we must understand that apart from kinetic attacks, and their consequences, we also have to deal with uh, cyber attacks on a daily basis. Uh, you said about something about, uh, before about the missile attack. Uh, recently, Ukraine uses the ATMCS missile from the US. Uh, could, you, could this weapon be the game changer for this war? Um, indeed, the international support and the help of our partners uh, and uh, especially the US or with uh, um, tools 
uh, to counter the attacks and uh, to keep our air defense is very important. So in this sense, uh, tanks are um, tools to uh, keep our air more secure and as such uh, protect our critical and civil infrastructure. So this is definitely one of the steps uh, to um, uh, fight uh, and uh, keep the continuity of life in Ukraine at the moment. Uh, but uh, the game changer would probably be uh, implementing the uh, peace formula. That would be the game changer uh, and the victory. We hope so. so Thank you. So, uh, but the Russia, they said that the use of the attempts will have serious consequences. Can you give a comment on this? Um, well, as I said, uh, this is one of the tools. It's a powerful tool to combat air defense. So um, um, it is indeed uh, one part of the uh, defense uh, formula. And uh, um, I, I believe that contemplating on uh, the different um, a seriousness of different consequences um, is in many ways irre irrelevant because war is so multidimensional. And sometimes um, some things that are not visible to us may be more important than some kinetic attacks. And as I said, uh, uh, related to cyber attacks, what we had at the beginning of the war, just before the um, uh, attack happened on the 24th of February, we had a major cyber attack. And if we wouldn't be able to hold that cyber attack, uh, then uh, the attack uh, of kinetic uh, weapons would uh, make much more devastation. So sometimes I don't think we can talk about game changers on the uh, major level uh, in this sense, but uh, on the tactical level, game changers uh, can be uh, any uh, tools well applied. So um, ATAMCs are uh, important uh, for Ukrainian air <coughs> defense and we are grateful for uh, that support. Uh, but uh, the major game changer will be uh, will be the victory and the implementation of the peace formula. Cyber attack is, uh, in my opinion, is one, one of the most dangerous attack uh, in, uh, for uh, any other country. Uh, how do you see uh, that the attacks uh, affect uh, Ukraine? Does it uh, affect the, the, uh, uh, the, transport, uh, uh, the use of airports or transportation or anything? Uh, uh, used by uh, the citizen of Ukraine? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> well, we see uh, and face cyber attacks on a daily basis uh, uh, that are uh, aimed at uh, uh, public services, yes. government uh, digital services, mm -hmm. uh, at uh, critical infrastructure, and of course uh, in the military sector, at the uh, army IT infrastructure. Uh, so. Uh, the cyber attacks on the critical infrastructure may prevent uh, people from uh, having their utilities working, mm -hmm. like water heating, telecommunications. The attacks on the banking sector can prevent uh, people from uh, accessing transactions and uh, doing their daily lives. Um, obviously, the public uh, services, the digital public services, and as you know, Ukraine is a uh, quite advanced in our digital ecosystem of public services, uh, so we use them on a daily basis. Uh, we use uh, digital uh, documents in our smartphones, and some people have switched from a plastic or paper version of documents to uh, app in the iPhone, or in the, in the phone, in the mobile phone, smartphone. So uh, if those cyber attacks succeed, then our daily activities of uh, our citizens would be interrupted. Um, so far, we managed to hold the front line on the cyberspace. Uh, so, um, uh, no major disruptions have happened sin, uh, since this time. No data leaks of our citizens have happened so far. Uh, and the banking sector, even during the highest, uh, uh, most intense attacks, uh, remained functional with no major uh, disruptions uh, made to the banking sector. So, uh, what about the misinformation? Uh, it's, it's quite related between the digital and the cyber attacks also. Right? Absolutely, that's right. Uh, in fact, misinformation is one of the major global challenges. And uh, in uh, diplomacy, uh, in cyber diplomacy, misinformation is one of the uh, major tracks 
of international cooperation and misinformation uh, uh, apart from war related uh, activities uh, and uh, affecting people's perception of uh, what is happening uh, in terms of war against uh, of Russia against Ukraine uh, apart from uh, this type of misinformation uh, there are also things related to uh, misinforming uh, communities uh, and people in daily life related to uh, some important events uh, and uh, happening in our countries. Uh, misinformation uh, uh, is also directed at children uh, we, who are most vulnerable in this sense and uh, uh, elder people who are not that uh, well acquainted with technology. Uh, so uh, I believe the misinformation is really a global challenge and we must all cooperate uh, to deal with it. Uh, misinformation uh, goes through different channels, not only the physical ones with the uh, press uh, uh, and uh, uh, television, but also through all the different social media platforms and uh, different services by, by the big tech companies. So uh, tackling misinformation uh, is a very multidimensional uh, process and uh, requires uh, many uh, government agencies uh, the media sector and the civil sector to cooperate uh, so that we uh, receive truthful information uh, because uh, re based on that information we make our decisions on a daily basis. Uh, there is a lot of misinformation uh, related to war not only in Ukraine but in other countries. Uh, we uh, also uh, monitor the situation in Indonesia and we are very grateful to uh, Indonesian uh, mass media community uh, for uh, presenting a balanced, uh, um, a balanced uh, a picture on what is happening uh, and uh, uh, trying to uh, filter uh, the critical misinformation in this sense. Um, um, so um, we try to cooperate uh, with the relevant mass media and uh, government institutions to help create a generally safer media space uh, and information space for uh, not only uh, Ukrainian people but for people worldwide. So uh, we can conclude that, that Ukraine has a capable uh, cyber army uh, in dealing with cyber crime and misinformation, right? Uh, this is a good question because it includes different um, um, different types of uh, cyber uh, cyber capacities, all right? So, IT army. Uh, the concept of IT army is uh, IT professionals that would be taking part in uh, military cyber operations, right? Uh, then there is uh, cyber defense, all right? These are uh, special. Uh, uh, forces and units that would uh, 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 tackle the uh, incoming cyber offensive attacks and um, uh, there there is uh, misinformation which is uh, more civil uh, activities right related uh, uh, related to uh, finding the misinformation and approaching having the right approaches to present the truth uh, in a better way and uh, in a more distributed way so that people would have access to truthful information uh, that is uh, backed by uh, facts and uh, where uh, needed history and uh, where needed social and government opinions and the industry opinions as well. So uh, we move to another issue. Uh, I want to know about the food security and the grain issues. What are the latest uh, updates about the grain shipment from Ukraine? Uh, is there any uh, trouble from Russia about the shipping? Uh, the shipping? Well, as you know, uh, after uh, Russia re uh, re uh, refrained from uh, uh, the uh, grain agreement, uh, and uh, it has been uh, difficult mm -hmm. to continue shipments and uh, shipments uh, face the risks of being attacked and destroyed mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Uh, Ukraine is working hard uh, uh, on the national level and with international partners to uh, <coughs> find uh, or create um, or manage uh, alternative uh, supply chains uh, to make sure that uh, grain exports continue. Uh, understanding the importance uh, of uh, uh, 
food security or, and Ukrainian shipments for uh, the population of many of the world countries. We give highest priority to countries which are in most need of uh, uh, Ukrainian exported grain. And uh, uh, we have managed to find certain alternative uh, channels uh, for a supply of Ukrainian grain and continue to uh, develop uh, this uh, alternative uh, network of supply channels. Um, we are grateful to the international community for the support uh, in uh, um, joining efforts uh, to deal with this uh, situation, to make sure that uh, the food security uh, infrastructure is protected and that grain is being delivered where it's needed most uh, as the priority. Uh, but, uh, Russia, they always uh, said that uh, the shipment of grain uh, always, uh, uh, the end result is always uh, go to the rich country, not the, the one who needs it the most. Uh, can you give a comment about that? Well, we just discussed the questions of misinformation. Yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, I believe that the, a good approach to this would be just to check the facts. So uh, the supply of grain is not a uh, uh, confidential uh, you know, area of information and uh, it is possible to uh, receive exact numbers on what uh, uh, amounts of grain uh, um, reached uh, which beneficiaries and countries. So. Um, Misinformation can appear in um, all areas of our life and also in positions and statements of Russia about the grain exports uh, situation. Uh, okay, uh, we want to, uh, the role of Indonesia for uh, giving help for Ukraine in, for uh, the war against Russia. Uh, uh, what, do you have, uh, what do you hope from Indonesia in, to help Ukraine in this war? Thank you for this question and uh, indeed the solidarity of uh, humankind uh, when we face uh, such major evil as we see emerged uh, in the war of Russia against Ukraine, the solidarity of, uh, uh, of people around the world is very important and um, um, uh, we have uh, uh, certain initiatives from Indonesia to uh, offer some help and support. Uh, obviously, uh, humanitarian aid by Indonesia would be of uh, great help. Um, taking part in humanitarian projects uh, related to uh, rehabilitation centers or health uh, institutions, um, or taking part in the development of uh, and restoration of uh, regions. Uh, we have some um, uh, good examples of other countries taking a particular city in a particular region and rebuilding it uh, or creating a, um, needed uh, medical or educational uh, uh, infrastructure objects uh, to deal with the consequences of war. So uh, these projects are, uh, we also welcome Indonesia to take part in uh, those. Uh, working together on the misinformation uh, would also be a great way to help Ukraine um, and uh, take part in a more global kind of challenge of misinformation. Um, cyber uh, security and cyber resilience is also one of the great areas uh, where um, we could, um, um, uh, we could uh, cooperate uh, and uh, misinformation is being uh, one of those tracks. Uh, so. Um, I believe resuming, uh, or not resuming, uh, moving forward the humanitarian projects um, uh, would be a great start uh, to get Indonesia to help uh, Ukraine in this situation. Okay, you are, you tell us about your agenda in here in, right now in, in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Have you met the, uh, our vice uh, foreign minister? Uh, yes, uh, it, it was my first meeting right after the airport. Uh, it was a great pleasure to meet His Excellency. Uh, Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs. Um, we were uh, in such a, uh, such a short uh, time between the airport and our meeting that uh, I didn't even have the time to uh, change uh, and put on a suit. Uh, but uh, we had a very productive conversation. One of the issues, uh, uh, important uh, issues for this event was food security, of course. Uh, so we discussed that um, and we gave uh, um, good attention to uh, uh, issues related to 
uh, cyberspace and the digitalization of public services. Uh, so on my agenda, uh, one of the priorities, and this is related to what I do at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Ukraine, is uh, digital transformations and uh, building uh, cyber resilience and cyber capacities. Uh, this is where Ukraine has uh, very advanced experience uh, uh, due to our uh, efforts and results in digitalizing our state, our country, uh, providing digital IDs to our citizens and all the many digital services uh, to uh, our people. Uh, plus, um, what we, uh, the experience we got during the war mm -hmm. is uh, building on the cyber resilience and capacities. But what we understand that this, um, this work and this experience not only relates to uh, consequences and risks of war, mm -hmm. but also to any of the natural disasters uh, or other disruptions that uh, uh, any uh, country or community may face when uh, 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 disruptions uh, are made to the critical or civil infrastructure or to the public services. And the, in this sense, the experience we have is something that we are happy to share happy to share with Indonesia, happy to share with the uh, ASEAN countries, uh, is um, how to build, uh, uh, build uh, a stable architecture for, uh, how to build a digital ecosystem for the public services, how to build a stable architecture for cybersecurity, including not only the technical components, but also the uh, regulations, uh, legislation, people, processes and technology and the physical components uh, like uh, energy uh, resilience, communication resilience, including satellite communications, and uh, our experience in cooperation with the private sector, uh, as it is called the private uh, public partnership, where the big tech companies uh, are now providers of uh, uh, important uh, part of services that support our daily lives uh, for citizens, for business and government. So uh, on my agenda is uh, uh, sharing this experience with Indonesia uh, uh, to uh, help uh, uh, Indonesia advance uh, uh, without having to uh, test what works and what doesn't, mm. to implement uh, the digital ecosystem for the public services and digital ID, cyber security and cyber resilience uh, in a fast uh, and most uh, optimal way, reducing the costs mm. and uh, uh, creating um, uh, creating a safe and transparent uh, digital world. Why do you choose Indonesia for this uh, digital cooperation? Uh, maybe for ASEAN too. Uh, why do you, do you choose ASEAN and Indonesia? Uh, we uh, have a very uh, warm history of warm relations uh, with Indonesia. We know we share many common values. Mm -hmm. And as we move to the digital world, uh, we see that Indonesia is uh, one of our major partners uh, in, uh, in the world and in the Asian region. Uh, we also understand the challenges of Indonesia due to its uh, uh, geographical uh, uh, speciality and, uh, uh, mm, and the specifics of how nature operates in this region and the uh, distances and uh, the diversity of different conditions. So we think the experience we have is um, a very useful and helpful for Indonesia uh, to, um, uh, to tackle the challenges that Indonesia has. And um, this is uh, uh, why we think that our experience could be very helpful in uh, uh, realizing one of the priorities of uh, uh, Indonesian president uh, to um, build a digital economy in Indonesia for uh, Indonesian citizens to make uh, their life more comfortable in working with the public sector. And we are very happy to support that initiative uh, um, from our side. So do you think that Indonesia is a, a potential market for digital uh, security for, for Ukraine? Um, well, when in cyberspace and cyber, uh, cyber and digital uh, uh, world, uh, there are no borders. So of course, uh, uh, moving further to digital economy, uh, businesses from uh, all over the world can take part in uh, activities in any country. Uh, at the same time, uh, we know that, um, uh, and our philosophy is that uh, sharing our experiences 
uh, our businesses who are competent in uh, digitalization and cybersecurity processes uh, can uh, take part in the initial stages. But with our philosophy, uh, we uh, are happy to share this experience with uh, Indonesian businesses because there is so much work that, uh, uh, that will be opened up uh, by creating this digital and developing this digital economy. That there is so much work for, uh, for the whole market and um, more segments of the market will be created. Uh, uh, so Indonesian businesses will uh, hugely profit from these developments in Indonesia. And uh, we just had a meeting with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it was very productive, uh, focused on digitalization and cyber security, cyber resilience. And this is the topic we discussed that um, uh, even that at the initial stages, uh, Ukrainian experience of uh, our public sector and the private sector could be of uh, help in taking active part uh, at the initial stages. Uh, that um, uh, Indonesian businesses must be number one who should profit from uh, uh, development of digitalization, digital economy. And considering your uh, close interrelation with the ASEAN countries, uh, the benefits uh, to ASEAN countries and ASEAN businesses should be of uh, number one uh, importance together with the Indonesian uh, private sector. Okay. Uh, uh, your friends, uh, the reason, uh, the recent uh, uh, update is about, uh, is I read about the Minister of Lavrov thanking Kim Jong-un uh, for his support in Ukraine. Uh, what do you think about this? Uh, well, I would say that we as humans uh, unite on the principle of uh, shared and common values, uh, on the principles uh, of our cultures, on what we have in common, on what we can build on, our trust and cooperation. So uh, it would be no surprise to see uh, dictator regimes uh, mm. building cooperation and trust uh, based on their values. And uh, at the same time, I believe that uh, uh, humanity has always uh, succeeded only when building on uh, human values uh, at the core of our lives and activities. Uh, so um, with uh, human and humanity uh, always winning in this battle. And that, I believe, would be a comment on the question uh, that you're asking. Yes. It's all about the values that we share. So, uh, this, uh, President Joe Biden is, uh, has announced the unprecedented security funding in, uh, for Ukraine. Uh, do you see this uh, as a huge patch, a huge, huge patch? Uh, towards victory against Russia? Um, we greatly appreciate the support of the United States um, during this difficult time of war of Russia against Ukraine. Uh, we highly appreciate the help of the international community and our strategic partners. Um, but at the end of the day, we understand that Ukraine is helped by the civilized humanity mm -hmm. because um, it's a question of, um, of um, a fight of humanism, right, against fascism. And in this sense, uh, we have this great opportunity for a very long history uh, of our planet and our societies to finally uh, get rid of fascism uh, in this world and um, uniting based on the humanity values uh, to find this evil and uh, reaching the victory once and for all is uh, something that is worth uh, worth fighting for altogether. So um, security funding announced by uh, President Joe Biden is uh, of course a highly appreciated and important step towards reaching that goal and Ukraine is uh, doing everything it can to uh, use uh, uh, all the support received uh, uh, fighting the evil and uh, standing strong and brave uh, uh, as much as possible to achieve the victory in the, uh, as soon as possible uh, to reach that, to resolve that global challenge that we all face as humanity.
and see how this is going to conclude our uh, interview. And we hope that victory for Ukraine, and we hope that this uh, crisis could end uh, for a positive result for Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fajar. It's been a pleasure. And um, once again, uh, warmest wishes to Indonesian people and uh, Indonesia. And we look forward to uh, further cooperation between our countries, our people, sharing the values, sharing uh, our cultures, and uh, creating uh, great things together. Thank you.